Hello everyone, and today we are going to see that how we can use generative AI help us find jobs. So someone said AI will replace our jobs in the future, but today let's see whether or not AI can help us find jobs first. Uh, so we will begin with uh, a Python code that AI generated to collect jobs from USC Jobs website. Uh, so if you go to USC web, uh, Jobs website, so they provide APIs allow us to search a job with keywords and also with locations. And unfortunately, uh, they don't have a, a Python package that can use the APIs directly. So that's also the major reason that I want to use uh, generative AI to help us write Python code. So you can see from their website, uh, they provide examples with JavaScript, or you can use uh, you can just uh, use uh, URL, so retrieve the data with URL directly. And I didn't find out a, a helpful Python package, so that's why I use AI to help us. So uh, I want to uh, first I want to make it very super clear that uh, if you find a data resource that provides direct data download, uh, use that downloading data is probably the best way and also the easiest way to to collect data. Otherwise, use APIs. So if a data resource they provide APIs use their APIs, and I think it is fine to use AI to help you write code as long as you are, you are using APIs because when you apply APIs, you provide your information and also they approve your request so you can use Python to collect data. I would avoid using web, web crawling to collect data, especially using web crawling with AI um, because nowadays uh, data becomes more and more valuable uh, they power large language models, so a lot of companies they protect data, and so they don't want you to use web crawling. So, at least you should always check the robust.txt file before you crawling a website. So let me show you how to check that. So for example, uh, this is the website that you want to do a web crawling, and you should check that robust.txt file. And to see that whether or not they allow you to do that. Again, I don't recommend use web crawling, and if especially if they provide APIs, I think using APIs uh, with AI probably is is a better way. So, uh, uh, um, so you may want to check their uh, data policies on the website you're interested. Okay, uh, next we need to set up a database and also request the API keys. So. We all use MongoDB, so the, the most popular uh, NoSQL database to store our data. Uh, so, and once you have that data cluster that set up, you need to find out the connection strings, and you need to save that into a safe place. So, in our case, we are using AWS uh, Secrets Manager, and feel free to use other uh, services or using other approach like using a configure.ini file or use a environment variable. Uh, so we have a database that set up on MongoDB and which is free. And once you have that uh, database or data cluster, and uh, you can go to connect, and then you can choose drivers, and you can choose. So here you will be able to see the the connection string. Uh, so you can copy this connection string, and uh, just remember that you need to manually change type your password, replace a password in that connection string. And once you have your connection string, you can go to AWS Secrets Manager and you can store a new secret. And we are using the API type. So here you can paste your strings and the key value is called API key. Uh, the key name is called API key. Again, remember that you need to replace your the password. So I'm going to type my password, which is I, I should not speed that out. <laughs> and next, you need to give it a secret name. So we call it MongoDB. And then you can next, and next. And here, you can look at the, the Python code. So this is a Python code we will use later. So that is a Python code that can retrieve the credential that you stored on AWS Secrets Manager. Uh, such as the uh, connection strings or APIs. All right, uh, I'm going to cancel it because I already stored my secrets. I stored my uh, MongoDB connection string. 
I stored my uh, AP, uh, API keys. And it also requires your email, so when you apply for API key from USA Jobs, you need to uh, provide your email as well. So you need to start that email uh, in AWS Secrets as well. Uh, so you also need to request an API key from the USA Jobs as well. So if you go to this website, and you can see this is a website, so you need to provide your username, uh, uh, sorry, your first name, or last name, your email address. Remember, we will use this email address later. Uh, your contact phone number and also name of the company. Uh, you also need to provide a very short description that why you need the, uh, those data from this website. You also need to read the terms and service and also agree with that. And you need to submit your, the request. And uh, within a few seconds, uh, you will receive email that to validate your email address. So, so whatever the email you provide here, you need to open that email and also uh, validate your email address. Um, and then you will receive the APIs to that email. So, so that's how you get the API keys. Uh, once you have your API keys, you are going to store that one uh, in a safe place like AWS Secrets Manager, like we did earlier. So um, uh, in that uh, uh, secret, you need, uh, the key is still called API key. The key value is API that you received in email. And also, secret name we will call it USA Jobs. And finally, you also need to store your um, your email, so email address. So the key name is called address. Uh, the key value is the email that you used when you applied API key. The secret is called email. So let me show you one more time. So we have MongoDB that contains the connection string. We have USA Jobs API key. We also have the uh, email address. Uh, because we are going to use OpenAI, so we also start the OpenAI uh, API key in the AWS Secret Manager as well. Okay, uh, so next we're going to import some Python package. So uh, we will use uh, Jupyter AI, that's a, a Jupyter Lab extension to call the Giant AI models. Uh, because we're using the Lab 3, Jupyter Lab 3, so we need to install the version 91.0. Uh, if I using the other, uh, if I using the Jupyter Lab V4, then uh, you don't need uh, this part. Okay, so let's go ahead and start uh, start the install the um, the Jupyter AI Python package. Uh, next, so uh, you can execute this line if uh, the AI model was not in the AI list. So, for example, if you cannot find out OpenAI in that uh, model list. Uh, you can execute this line because I know uh, I need to run this line, so I'm going to execute this one as well. Uh, we also need to pip install MongoDB so that we can make a connection to our uh, MongoDB uh, website. Uh, I will skip this line because we already installed the Jupyter AI uh, square bracket all. So I will also in I will also install the uh, py mongo. Okay, uh, so this is a secret manager function that I showed earlier. I changed that a little bit so that I can use this uh, function to call different um, credentials. So let's also uh, run this cell. Okay, uh, so now we have this uh, secret function. So now we're going to import the Python library, and also we're going to load the credentials. So you can see uh, we are loading the API key uh, by using this secret function, and we store that one to an environment variable. So this is required by the, uh, by the Jupyter AI extension. We also loaded our email address to this email variable. We loaded our connection string to this MongoDB connect variable. We also loaded our jobs API key to this USA jobs key variable. Uh, next, we're going to connect to our MongoDB cluster. So uh, we are using a database called a demo in our cluster. So if we have that database, we will use that database. Otherwise, we will create a new database named demo. Uh, and then we are going to uh, install, we are going to insert the collected data into this job collection. Uh, collection. So that is in the demo database. 
Again, if we have that collection, then we will insert new data into that existing collection. Uh, if we don't have that collection, then we are going to create a new collection that's called uh, job collection. Okay, so that is success. And now we are going to load the AI uh, magics. So let's load AI magics. And after we loaded the AI magics, and you can check whether or not the, the AI model that you're going to use is available. So uh, Jupyter AI extension supports uh, different uh, large language models. Uh, so uh, you may also you may also want you may, you may want to check that whether or not the model that you want to use, the large language model you want to use is uh, is included. Okay, so let's just wait this one to be completed. And now let's run this, check this AI model list. Uh, you can see they, have, they support Bedrock. Uh, and also the, the model from Microsoft, the model from Google, uh, Hugging Face, NVIDIA. Uh, you can see the OpenAI. So we are using OpenAI. So we have a green check mark. So that means we can use OpenAI uh, large language models in our, uh, in our code. All right, so now it is an exciting moment. So uh, we're going to write a prompt to ask uh, OpenAI to write Python code for us. So we see the syntax that magic comments presented, presented AI. Uh, we're using GPT-4. We want the format to be code. So I see dash f code. And now those are an example of the prompt that works uh, when I tested. So basically, I, we are asking AI to write a Python function to search jobs from USA jobs. Uh, it looks like OpenAI does have the data, at least in their training data, that how to use uh, USA jobs APIs. And then I want to retrieve the maximum result per page and also maximum pages. So I want to collect as many pages as possible. Uh, so uh, if you check their search APIs, and uh, you will see that they can receive keywords. Uh, you can also define the, the locations. Uh, you can also define the number of the, the pages that you want to request, and also for each single page that are returned, and how many jobs will be returned in each single page. So you can see the maximum number is 500 jobs uh, in each single page. Okay, and next I want the AI to extract the information in this search result and also store each job as a separate uh, uh, documents. So s store each job in a separate attribute document as a separate uh, MongoDB document. Uh, so if you look at, uh, if you check their APIs, uh, so this is the return result. You can see we ha they have a lot of information that you may not want, for example, like the search result count, etc. And uh, those are the exact job that you want, like they have position ID, title, uh, the position URLs, um, and also organization names, department names. Uh, they also have the, like, like the salary uh, range, uh, and also the user areas are the information that are provided, I believe, uh, uh, by the employee. So uh, by the employer. So employers, when they want to recruit, uh, they want to uh, post some job positions, and they they uh, they provide those information. Okay. So I ask AI to extract those information from the return result and store each job as a separate MongoDB document. I also tell that AI that the MongoDB database and the collection is already set up, so you don't need to make the collections or uh, you don't need to set up the connect, uh, connection to the database or create a new database or collections. So do not use, do not set up the client or collections, so use the collection that directly. Uh, I also tell AI that users will provide the agent, which uh, are the emails, the author, authorization key, the job location, job keywords, and also MongoDB collection. Okay, so let's give it a try. 
and see if they can create uh, some code that will work. Uh, so you may need to try it multiple times to write. Uh, so based on the written result and see if that works or not. Uh, if it doesn't work, uh, so hopefully you will be able to find out what are the reasons that the code didn't work. And also you just rewrite your prompt uh, with some more clear guidelines. OK, so here we have these results. OK, uh, so you can see they, they define a function where they, uh, they will allow user to uh, provide uh, the email, uh, API key location, keywords, and also collections. Uh, they also said that for each page, they will try to re retrieve the 500 uh, results. Um, and the next, uh, they are going to parse the information. So that for, for each return result, um, they're going to try to uh, re, uh, find out job ID, position title, URL, organization names, qualification summaries, uh, locations, and also salary, salary range, uh, and also job, job summary. And then they are going to try to insert the data into the, the collection that we provided. OK, so uh, let's give it a try and see whether or not it works or not. So we're going to add a new cell. And we're going to copy this code. So we're going to uh, We're going to provide information. So let's first let's define this function, and there are no errors. So here, let's see, the agent will be our uh, email, and the key will be our USA jobs dot API key. So this should be underscore. OK, uh, the location. So I'm going to search location in Fairfax, Virginia. The keywords, uh, so I'm going to search the keyword that see if I can find out job that in relate to AI. Uh, the collection will be job collection that we defined earlier. OK, uh, so hopefully this will work. So you can see that we didn't provide any credentials to the AI in the prompt. Um, actually, you can try to write this prompt in ChatGPT. So you don't need necessarily use uh, uh, use uh, Jupyter AI extension to write, to create this Python package or Python code. Uh, I'm using this here because it's uh, just convenient that I don't need to copy paste uh, from the ChatGPT. All right, uh, so let's write and the finger cross when we hope, hope for this will work. OK, it didn't work. Can only string, OK, so page. All right, so uh, looks like there is a bug in its code. So uh, that's fine. And so that's very common to, uh, so you can give it another try. So let's say we just retry it. And now I'm going to delete that code. So let's just give it another try and see if they can and generate a different code that hopefully will work. OK, uh, so I tried it again, and it just gave me a same Python code. And also, uh, and also it did uh, give me a same error. So I look at the code, and it turns out that this should be an integer, and not should be a, a, a string format. So if you know Python, then you can see it's a very easy uh, bug that to fix. So let's just rewrite. OK, now we have a new error that is uh, job ID. So it looks like they don't have the job ID in, the, uh, in that result, Okay, which is uh, interesting. So it uh, looks like um, this code still doesn't work. Uh, I think it is called position ID. OK, so uh, what I'm going to try is that uh, so it looks like uh, uh, they're trying to extract the, the information that as we requested uh, from the return result, but uh, it just 
uh, AI does not understand the structure of the return data. So for example, we don't have a job ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this instruction. So and just hopefully just AI just store each job in a separate MongoDB document. Uh, do not extract the, the key information. So let's try it one more time. And it looks like uh, AI is uh, super consistent. They still want to extract the information. So again, the error is that they don't have job ID in the return result. Um, it is called position ID. So um, let me see. Uh, do not extract job from the returned results. Okay. Okay, uh, here we go. So we have this uh, code where uh, you can see that in this time, uh, AI doesn't extract the um, uh, like the, the key value, key values, because uh, sometimes they may make a mistake. So I'm going to, uh, and also I think this error is still here. So it's called integer. Okay. Uh, so let's run this code one more time uh, uh, and see, let's give it a try and see whether or not this one will work. So you can see the difference here this time is that they just uh, find from the search result, they put the result, insert that into MongoDB uh, database directly. Uh, AI didn't extract information like job ID, job summaries, etc. Um, because uh, uh, the return format, AI uh, looks like didn't understand uh, that the job ID is actually called position ID. Okay, let's draw it. And this time uh, it worked. So we fixed a very simple bug that is convert the number pages into integer. And also we changed our prompt that uh, previously we said extract job information from the return result. And it gave us errors. And then we changed the prompt, say, okay, then forget about that. So do not extract job information from the return result. And now AI does a pretty good job. Uh, so feel free to try different prompts um, by yourself and see if you can find out the job that, uh, if you see if you can um, uh, have a Python code that work for you. Uh, so I'm going to change my prompt back to my original one uh, because uh, I used this prompt and uh, tested it before and it actually worked. So I'm going to uh, restore that one to the original one. Um, and here are the return result that worked before. So uh, uh, for some, if for some reason that uh, you, you tried different prompts and it never worked, and just feel free to use this code that um, to collect some data. Uh, so those code are the generated AI uh, generated by AI that works uh, as well. So we tried. I tried that one before I recorded this video. All right, uh, so now let's go back to look at our data. So here, uh, let's just refresh this. All right, uh, so now we have the data that collected in our uh, database. Uh, so uh, you can see that we have the position ID. Yes, that's position ID, not the job ID. We have the title, uh, position URI, um, and also applying. That should be URL, right? URL or URI. Um, and also we have other information like the location name, uh, country code, uh, city name, uh, latitude, longitude, organization, uh, organization name, uh, department name. Uh, we also have like see uh, when the position will start, when the application will start, and uh, when the application will close. Um, and also qualification summaries. Um, and also I think we also have the uh, like the requirements, evaluations, um, and also benefits. Um, uh, there should be also a field that contains the, yeah, so the, the salary information, so the, the minimal and also maximal of the salary range. Uh, we also have the additional information that are provided by the 
uh, employer. So when they send out this post uh, to the website, so those are the job summary, uh, who sent out the information, um, anything else. So the what to be exact, expect next, how to apply, uh, etc. All right, so now we have the data that in our uh, database. So we have 80 our jobs that talk about I around Fairfax. Uh, so if you recall that in our in my previous tutorials that we can query the data by using a natural language. So let's do that. So we uh, generate a query. Let's see um, what is the maximum salary. Uh, so they just you, you know uh, sort by the uh, maximum salary range ordered by one and also limited by one. So let's look at the result. That's um, yeah. So that is this one. Uh, Twenty three thousand. And let's see that um, what um, count the number of posts in different locations. Generate. Uh, so uh, this will be an aggregation pipeline. Um, you can see that uh, we unwind the positions location, and then we group the position locations, and then we use a project uh, to just show the uh, position count. So we can see that uh, uh, we have six jobs from this one, uh, nine jobs from here, uh, three jobs from here. Okay, uh, there's no jobs from... Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, show the... Top ten locations with most job posts. Okay, um, let's see where what are the locations that have the uh, have most of the job. Okay, so now this makes sense because uh, remember that when we query the data, we set the location to be uh, Fairfax. Okay, so we have forty jobs that are from Washington DC. Uh, it's also interesting that we have still have 35 jobs from other, like, uh, 33. Okay, um, so my guess is that there are some job posts that they, they accept uh, application from multiple locations. So apparently that Washington DC is just one of them. And because it is close to Fairfax, so those posts were retained. Okay, uh, let's also list the top 10, uh, organizations okay see uh, which organizations uh, send okay so we have the Federal Aviation Administration uh, Department of State okay uh, NASA okay that would be cool so uh, and those Air Force let's see uh, show me the jobs from NASA Let's see if we can do that. Okay, apparently they cannot understand this one because um, uh, it should be, um, so this one requires a text search actually, so because that NASA is just part of the organization. All right, uh, so uh, so this is just a very simple query, so where you have your data in the your, in your database, uh, you can uh, do some uh, quantitative analysis like I use uh, use those um, uh, like filters, uh, project sort, limit, etc. Or you can also use aggregation pipelines. And the nice thing is that you can write your queries in natural language, and then uh, MongoDB will return the result and hopefully the right result uh, to you. Okay. So what if let's say um, I want to dive deep into the the like the, the, the job requirements. So for example, here uh, for each single job, uh, they have, let's say, the, um, uh, 
the summary, the qualification, qualification summaries. And so those summaries are normally very long. And, and also, uh, we also can, um, we may also interest in the, in the information that provided by the employee, employer. So for example, like how to evaluate this job and how to apply uh, do we have other like from uh, and also the job summary uh, and also agency marketing statement? So we might also interest in those uh, messages, so those qualitative data. And this is where uh, generative AI models can help understand and, and analyze those information. So, so there are multiple ways to an, uh, an analysis analyze uh, those data. So I think the best way is that you can create a vector database. Uh, you can convert, use, use OpenAI APIs or the other large language models, APIs to analyze each individual uh, fields, like each, each individual message, like the summary or the marketing uh, statement. And then you can use another large language model to uh, summarize those uh, information and also and also even create a chatbot that you can interactively uh, retrieve the information that you want. So that's the best way so that you you build a vector database, you can do some semantic search, and also you use an API to create a chatbot. However, that requires advanced uh, skills. So today I'm going to show uh, an easy way. So so let's first, let's export the data. So we are going to uh, go to the collections and export the collection. And we can export this as a CSV format. Uh, so let's just save it as a text txt file, so text file. Okay, uh, and this is not being processed. Uh, so although we only have like 80 jobs, uh, it actually contains a huge amount of the data. So uh, if we, uh, so this is a downloaded uh, text message. And uh, if we open it uh, with uh, Notepad, uh, you can see actually it contains uh, a lot of information. Okay, and uh, so if you are using ChatGPT, if you upload this one to ChatGPT and also uh, ask J uh, GPT to analyze it, so it may uh, reach the limit of the ChatGPT uh, chatbot. So. Uh, if you recall that in my previous video, uh, tutorial, I recommended using uh, Notebook LM. So Notebook LM is free for now. And one important feature is that it can take huge amount of the data, so comparing to other uh, general AI applications. So let's use uh, Notebook LM. Uh, I'm logging with my uh, Gmail account. Uh, it's free for now. And let's create a new notebook. And let's drag the the data, so it accept uh, txt files, um, and also again, so notebook lm can accept a huge amount of data. So comparing to other free uh, uh, gentle AI applications, so that's why I use notebook lm uh, as as long as it is free. All right. So you can see after a few seconds, uh, they generate a summary. So those are the job posting from the various government agencies, including uh, those agencies. Uh, you can also create a table of content, a briefing document, and they also provide you some uh, suggested questions. And you can, you can even create a podcast. And now you can even create podcasts that can, you can customize the podcast. So for example, um, tell me what are the co common comments in those jobs. Okay, um, and how should I prepare for the applications? Okay, so let's just hit. Um, Generate. Uh, so where well, it has been generating. So let's also let's also ask questions directly in the in the chatbot. So for example, uh, 
uh, what are the common salaries? Okay, uh, let's see whether AI is able to extract those information. All right, uh, so you can see they uh, generate the result. So for the, this agency, they, those are the uh, job information, and they also give you uh, where they find all those information in the provided uh, text message. Uh, so, uh, and also there's another one. Okay, so they may not give you a very complete uh, information. So again, if you're, if you want to know the quantitative results like the, the salary range, dates, etc. So I still recommend using the database to make those queries because that will be more accurate. Uh, this can just give you, like you can just use it as FYI, so because uh, large language models are not good at, you know, do very accurate calculations. Uh, for example, let's do another one. So uh, what agencies are Herring. Okay, so this is uh, uh, again. So this question you can also just do a. Uh, the best way is to do a query. So, uh, uh, for example, like what we did, like show me the uh, the uh, the top ten agencies or the top ten organizations. Organizations. So that uh, database will give the most accurate result. Uh, so let's look at this information here. So. F H F A D O I D H S. Okay, N I S T. Okay, so so the, the, this y'all can give you extract some information, and if you put like mouse here, and they can show you where the data are coming from. Uh, again, uh, they not they may not be complete. So for example, this one they just like the uh, six quotation marks. Um, okay. Uh, however, there's something that uh, AI is good at. So for example. Uh, what are the general requirements uh, for those jobs? Okay, so those are something that uh, large language models uh, are good at. So they can extract the, the qualitative information like the, the text messages, and they can give you a very uh, detailed or accurate sum, uh, summary. So for example, most of jobs require US citizens. Okay. Uh, and also you can see, including those with TSA, CBP, FAA, etc. Uh, background investigations, so like uh, those information and, uh, and also uh, transcribe direct depo direct deposit. Oh, okay, uh, age limit limits. They also have the lead age registrations. Okay. Okay. So for example, uh, okay, uh, secret clearance. Okay, um, and also you can also see. Um, Let's see. Uh, you can also ask questions like, uh, based on your qualifications, so what jobs are recommended? For example, I have a PhD in geography and ten years in Python database, data visualization, machine learning, and AI. Okay, uh, what are the, where are the, what are the recommended jobs? Okay, and hopefully they can recommend, and hopefully and they can recommend jobs that are close to, to my family. All right, so so here are some information that recommend jobs like data science and analytical roles. For example, there's a senior data scientist at FHFA, uh, data analyst at SSA, 
uh, and also a senior data scientist at FHFA, um, uh, etc. So, okay. Uh, and also remember that earlier we want to show me the job that from NASA because we find out there's a one job post, or at least one job post at by NASA. So let's see if. And uh, we couldn't find that result by using uh, the database. So let's see if we can find that one from the, by using large language models. Are there any jobs from NASA? OK. Yes, there are jobs at NASA. So like diverse range of position in NASA, for example, uh, Okay, they are still based on my background in geography, so they, uh, they just recommend some jobs that, uh, from NASA. Okay, so let's see, show me the job post from NASA. Okay, so here are what we want. So here are some jobs NASA posted. So like uh, technical management, and let's see. Those are the, where they extract from the text message. Accountant, uh, engineer program special, specialist, uh, director of the cloud and computing service. Uh, and this one, director of information data and analytic service. Okay. Um, Let's see. Tell me more about this one. So, Director of Information, Data, and Analytical Services. OK, uh, so responsible for this data. So, data analytics, uh, et cetera, and leadership. And uh, <laughs> all right, uh, I'm going to try this one. Do you think I am qualified? Okay, uh, <laughs> I, I, I want to know that was, uh, I don't think I am uh, because uh, it requires uh, the leadership. So that's the response. You provided, uh, you possess several qualifications, uh, education experience, key responsibilities, overall uh, experience, Geography, okay. Okay, great. Um, I think if you, uh, if I'm going to apply for this job, so probably I will. I will consider this one, put this one in my uh, in my cover letter. All right. Um, let's see. Show me the job post URL. Okay. Um, I should be more specific. I want to see the this one. So this does not provide URL for this one. Okay. Uh, easier uh, URI. I don't know why uh, in the database I saw it called uh, URI. Contain URI, okay. They don't provide specific URLs for any job positions. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, all, all right, so uh, that's a very, uh, I think it's a very interesting uh, tutorial. So uh, we first Okay, we first uh, start from collecting data with uh, from the USA jobs by using uh, their APIs. Again, I highly recommend that if you can find data source and provide direct data downloads, download data. Uh, that's the easiest way. Otherwise, use APIs to so do not do the web crawling because it may res result uh, some legal issues. Um, especially if you ignore their uh, robot.txt files or if you ignore their uh, date policies. So we want to find a job and we don't want to lose a job. Um, and then we try different prompt to uh, to collect some data. So uh, you can try this prompt and see if uh, the the code work. And also hopefully you can revise your prompt and to have a working uh, Python function or working code. 
Uh, otherwise, uh, feel free to use my example code, which was generated by uh, Gentil AI, uh, and also it works. And once we have those data, so we, uh, you can use the natural language query in MongoDB to try to explore the data. So uh, like find out some quantitative analysis, for example, like the salary range, the locations, which uh, the database is very good to provide accurate uh, uh, response. Uh, let's see that what are the general job requirements, and also you can you, you can even provide your your background and see they can recommend some jobs for you, and you can do that one with large language models uh, such as uh, Notebook LM. Okay, so finally, uh, uh, wow, this this uh, thirty minutes uh, uh, podcast. So let's just listen a little bit about podcast. So that's the end of this tutorial. Okay, so thinking about a career change. Federal government, huh? Well, you came to the right place. We've got a whole stack of job postings. And uh, let me tell you, it can feel kind of overwhelming, but that's why we're here. We'll break down the requirements, give you some application tips. Think us as your guides through this, uh, hmm. this bureaucratic jungle. You know, it's amazing the variety in these postings. We've got everything here. Air interdiction agents, librarians, data scientists, even housekeeping aid supervisors really shows you how much goes into keeping the government running, you know? Yeah, seriously. Librarians at the Department of Transportation. Mm. Who knew? Mm. But let's focus on you. You mentioned data science and IT, right? That's right. And a good place to start is with the minimum qualifications, kind of like the... Uh, the price of admission. Almost all these postings will tell you what education and experience you need to even apply. Like this data scientist position at the Federal Housing Finance Agency. They want a degree in computer science, math, statistics, or a related field. No shortcuts there. Exactly. They want to see that foundation. But, and this is interesting, some postings will let you swap experience for education. It's like you're saying, hey, maybe you didn't go to college. But if you can code a website from scratch, come no, on in. Really? So all that time coding late at night or running a blog, that could count for something. Absolutely. They're looking for proof. Can you actually do it, not just talk about it? Like this IT program manager role at the Navy, they consider volunteer experience too. So if you're like the tech person for your community group, that could be your in. Exactly. That's pretty cool. It makes it seem a lot less scary. But All right. Uh, so I'm going to stop here. Uh, and if you're interested, uh, you can repeat what we have done and also create your own podcast and explore what are the job requirements and also hopefully you can find out a job that you are interested in.